Be Quiet just released the Shadow Rock 3. 190 watt TDP. The most exciting thing about this cooler is you can pick it up on Newegg for about $50 and it's from Be Quiet. I mean, Be Quiet's a pretty relatively premium brand. It's pretty, you know, pretty well known, I think. Get the QR code on the side. This is the Shadow Rock 3. We're gonna take a look. Now, I don't know, tower coolers, what's really interesting about tower coolers? I think this is the new Hyper 212 Evo. The Hyper 212 Evo is a legendary cooler. For whatever reason, that particular design is just the right combination of aesthetics, functionality, and performance. This is probably the new performance crown, or the, the, new, the new all of those things, but from Be Quiet, the Shadow Rock 3. So first up, it's 122 millimeters tall. So it's gonna fit in most tower cases. Can't really say that about all tower coolers. And also RAM clearance. RAM clearance actually is pretty good with this cooler because it's offset. Now, for a relatively in inexpensive cooler, some trade-offs were required. There are five direct touch heat pipes. On the bottom here it comes with a sticker. Uh, it's aluminum. I mean, it's not even black. And the spacing on the fins here it's kind of a lot. I mean, you can, you know, I'm not super obscured looking through the uh, the cooler here. It also requires a super absurdly long screwdriver to go through the middle here. That puts tension on it to press down, uh, and uh, a regular ordinary screwdriver is not going to be long enough. Fortunately, it does come with a screwdriver so that you can do that. In the box is a 120 millimeter Silent Wings fan. This fan does go all the way up to 100 and, uh, 1600 RPM. It's got a nice flat four pin connection and it's not super long. In the box you have mounting hardware to use it with AM4. So that'll be any 2000, well 1000, 2000 or 3000 series Ryzen CPU. This is a particularly good CPU for the Ryzen 3000 series uh, of CPUs, even the 3950X. And we'll get more about more to that in a second. But uh, it'll also work pretty well with 2066 CPUs, uh, Intel 2066 CPUs and the older 2011 CPU, if you still have a socket 2011 CPU, like a 5960X, this would be a good cooler for a 5960X. It's it's surprisingly good between five heat pipes and the, the cooler and the tower and taking advantage of airflow through the rest of the system. It's a surprisingly competent cooler. The box has 190 watt TDP, keep that in mind. So Threadripper, Threadripper is right out. There is no mounting hardware for Threadripper. So again, you know, it's an inexpensive tower cooler recommendations. 10 or 12, maybe 14 core, 2066, okay. But really, this would go well with a 9900K, although I couldn't achieve uh, Prime 95 five gigahertz with this for a sustained amount of time, but for gaming and those kinds of workloads, it was completely fine. For um, things like the uh, Socket 2011 CPUs, I mean, 14 cores is sort of starting to push it because those CPUs will easily consume in excess of 200 watts once you start overclocking. As long as you don't plan to overclock, of course, this would be fine. But if you're gonna overclock, it's gonna be a little more problematic. Also in the box, you've got clips for an extra fan. So if you wanted to put an extra 120 millimeter fan on it, you could. But uh, the shape is the other thing. With this mounting shape, generally it's not designed for uh, four socket systems or quad channel systems where you have memory on the back of the, the cooler. The, the fan can go on the front and because the height of the fan is adjustable, you're generally not gonna have RAM clearance issues. So I don't think I would recommend this for anything except AM4 and um, the 11 5X sockets from Intel. I think that's gonna be your, your best bet for this cooler. Now I mentioned AMD AM4. AMD CPUs come with a perfectly reasonable cooler. You do not need to replace the cooler on an AM4 system. The only reason that you might want to is that, especially on turbo, it can be a little loud. This thing, the other piece of this review, this thing was shockingly quiet. Like insane, like disturbingly quiet. Like, did I do something wrong? Is this really running at 1600 RPM? So, all right, brass tax time. Can you hear that? That's about as loud as an AM4 cooler gets. And if you want something that's whisper quiet, so quiet the microphone's much quieter than that. That's maximum RPM. I think the power supply is actually louder than this fan. 
There's the AMD fan. Ooh. I mean, it's fine. This is a 3900X. This is a 12 core. So I would consider this cooler for like the 3900X. I, you know, in terms of like overclocking and, and that sort of thing, I, I mean, yeah, it'll give you a little bit of headroom on overclocking on AM4. It's fine. But I think for like an i5 or an i7, like the 9700K, um, this would be a great choice. I mean, it's a great $50 cooler. It really, it really is. It comes with everything you need in the bag, the cooler, all the other stuff. All right, brass tax time. How does it stack up against the Hyper 212 Evo? Well, it outperforms the Hyper 212 Evo, at least for, so the testing here was a little weird. Prime 95 AVX2 extended load on a 3900X, surprise 3900X, yeah. I also tested Intel, but I'm just gonna give you that anecdotally instead of like formally. AVX512, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Hyper 212 Evo was louder and did not cool quite as well as the Be Quiet on maximum RPM. Uh, the Noctua U12S, which is twice as expensive, uh, was maybe a half a degree better on average. It was within margin of error. So I don't think that this, I think this is about as good as a U12S on our AMD platform. Now that bothered me a little bit. So I decided to check an Intel system and the Intel 9900K system was about one and a half degrees warmer with that Prime 95 AVX2 load after about an hour or so. And that was just with a single Noctua 120 millimeter stamp. You know, we're not using the new Noctua coolers or anything like that. So $50 for approximately the same performance as the Noctua U12S, which is, you know, the flagship leader in terms of quiet and performance. I mean, Noctua makes a good product. This is a cheaper product. It's it's uh, more inexpensively built. You know, you get the the aluminum fins. You get this sort of weird. I mean, they, they try to put a little bit into the aesthetic here, but this is a cost down product. But even though it's a cost down product, there's no RGB. There's no anything like that. Well, I mean, there's not a Noctua either. We do have good direct touch heat pipes that seem to be effective for what they do, carrying heat away from the CPU. This whole thing is machined flat. We've got the fins here. This was an effective cooler for the 3900X, keeping it under 75 degrees C in the worst gaming, or in the worst torture test scenarios. And in gaming scenarios, it was even better. So this is, I think, the new go-to cooler for about $50. It's just unfortunate that <laughs> most AMD CPUs come with a good cooler and you don't like if you're if you want to save money you don't really need to buy an extra cooler unless you just want a quieter system in which case this will be quiet i wonder this is level one if you like this or whatever let me know something i'm signing out and i'll see you in the forums